Foreign ministers from NATO countries are meeting here in Berlin for talks dominated by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Ministers will also be discussing proposals by Sweden and Finland to join the Defence Alliance. Public opinion in the two Nordic countries has shifted in favour of joining following the Russian invasion. Russia has warned neighbouring Finland that becoming part of NATO would be a mistake. NATO member Turkey may also be against Sweden and Finland membership. It accuses both countries of backing Kurdish militants that it says are terrorists. For others in the alliance, their membership is a no-brainer. DW's Terry Schultz has this report. Becoming a full member of NATO used to be a line Finland and Sweden did not intend to cross. In Brussels, that line is actually a street, with partner countries on one side and NATO allies on the other. We meet Finland's NATO ambassador Klaus Korhonen at the building where his mission is located for now. After the Russian aggression against Ukraine, so uh, our security environment in, in Europe and also in Northern U Europe, it, it, it has changed. Uh, uh, it's now more insecure and, and I think this, this move uh, to increase our cooperation and become member of, of uh, NATO is the right step. The alliance has always made clear to Finland and Sweden there's a place for them here. Room for more flags and some offices that could use new tenants. But as some of the most wealthy, well-equipped countries in Europe, these new Nordic members would fill much more important gaps than those. Sweden and Finland bring different uh, assets to NATO. Finland famously brings the ability to guard a very la long land border with Russia. Sweden brings uh, a 500-year-old navy uh, and a navy that is among the largest in the Baltic Sea, where we should remember NATO doesn't have very many large navies. Accepting the two countries should be a no-brainer for NATO, says former Finnish Prime Minister Alexander Stubb. They're more NATO compatible than most NATO member states themselves. So take Finland as an example. We've always spent about 2% of our GDP on uh, military uh, expenditure. Uh, we have uh, reserves of 900,000. We can mobilize uh, 280,000 quickly during a wartime. We have uh, 62 F-18s, just bought 64. Uh, F-35. And indeed, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg has said this would be a record fast accession process once the two governments formally confirm they want to join, though it will still take months for 30 NATO governments' stamps of approval. Even ahead of their formal applications, Finland and Sweden are receiving pledges from allies of defensive backup against possible Russian retaliation. And they'll be providing security as well. I think Finland is already uh, protecting uh, the northern flank of the alliance and uh, with NATO membership that would be even more effective. Maybe we have more visibility and, and um, more information, more experience on uh, what, what is going on and what might happen. So I think, yes, I think that perspective will be welcome. Mutual security is already a two-way street, but bound to be easier when all the Nordic countries and NATO are on the same side of it. But not all NATO members are keen to let the Scandinavian countries become part of the Defence Alliance. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken arriving in Berlin for NATO talks at a time the alliance is seeing a sharp rise in its geopolitical relevance. The talks are focused on long-term goals, but more immediately, the accession of Finland and Sweden are also on the table. Not only should Sweden and Finland uh, join NATO, but they should do so quickly. Of course, I'll have a good conversation with my counterpart. It is important that we have also consensus. Consensus could be an issue. NATO member Turkey accuses Sweden and Finland of harboring militant Kurds. Uh, Turkish people, predominantly, a uh, big majority of the Turkish people, are against uh, the membership of those countries who are supporting uh, PKK, YPG, terrorist organization and they are asking us uh, to block this membership. Finland, at least, is confident this issue can be smoothed out. I called to my good colleague uh, Mevlut Savusoglu, the foreign minister, and uh, a little bit to take the tensions down, and we will also meet, meet today, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that we will find a solution to, to this item. Unity is key in the alliance as it looks to the future in these Berlin talks. How to further reinforce NATO's presence in Eastern Europe, given the tensions with Russia, and for the first time, to lay out guidance on dealing with China.
DW correspondent Alexandra von Naaman is in Berlin following this meeting for us. Alexandra, given those comments from the Turkish Foreign Minister, how difficult is that pathway for Finland and Sweden toward NATO membership? Well, we had a chance here to speak with many foreign ministers and I have to say that most of them were very optimistic and, and confident that Turkey will come around, that they will not undermine uh, the alliance's unity and will not eventually block uh, or uh, keep, uh, they will drop their opposition to Sweden and Finland joining uh, the alliance. And some of them indicated that Turkey might have domestic reasons or some bilateral issues with some allies. Uh, there are rumors that the reason for Turkey's objection could be um, could be restrictions on weapons deliveries to the country. The U.S., as we know, also imposed uh, sanctions on Turkey after the country decided to buy Russian-made air defense systems. So uh, all of this is sort of on the table, but we have to say that uh, uh, most uh, ministers here were very uh, uh, optimistic uh, that uh, in the end uh, uh, the accession process um, for Sweden and Finland should they declare officially that they want to join the alliance will be quick and smooth. Vladimir Putin's nightmare has long been NATO expansion. How serious are Finland and indeed NATO taking Russian threats of retaliation to this move? Well, I think that any threats coming out of Russia are being taken seriously by NATO and, of course, by Finland as well. As we know, uh, as you just mentioned, Russia has vowed what they call military and technically retaliation. We know that uh, they are threatening to move more troops towards their border with Finland, which is a very long 1,300 kilometers. Uh, that could be cyber attacks. Uh, uh, and they have already announced to uh, suspend deliveries of electricity to Finland. That is, however, something that Finland can deal with. Uh, they have a new power, a nuclear power plant. They have wind energy, so they are not very concerned about that. And the thinking here is also that, you know, uh, Russia is uh, threatening to retaliate. However, uh, Russia have suffered uh, huge losses in Ukraine, and actually their army is busy there. Just briefly, Alexandra, this landscape is shifting daily. What else is on the agenda while this meeting is going on? The continuous support of NATO allies for Ukraine, of course, and then they're also talking about a long-term strategic concept for NATO that should address new challenges and risk, of course, Russia's aggression, but also China's role on the international stage. DW correspondent. Alexander von Naaman in Berlin. Thanks so much.